which is just like undoing the rules in your head, like undoing the power rule. You know, you're like, what's the integral of x squared? You're like, well, the derivative of x squared is one third x cubed. And then there's integration by parts and there's u substitution. You have like three categories. That first category of just like knowing how to integrate something kind of blows up in terms of lots of little tiny things you have to learn to recognize. Lots of little tiny things you need to learn to recognize. They aren't their own methodologies like parts. You'll look at things like, oh, u substitution, I recognize it. Oh, parts, I've been told, or maybe I recognize it. But you might come across things that look like this, for example. Not much algebraically is super complicated about that. It's just what's the denominator is what type of polynomial. It's a quadratic, and it already has been nicely factored for you, which is a strong hint as to what you need to do. Does anybody remember what you need to do on this one? Partial fraction decomposition. You need to break this apart into two things that you do know the integral of, that you do know the integral of. So your first goal is to take this and turn it into some constant over x minus 2 plus some constant over x minus 5. Do that first for me. Is you get rid of your denominators, multiplying by the common denominator, you get 1 is equal to a times x minus 5 plus b times x minus 2, correct? Okay, Michael, turn around, take a look. Don't sit down, everybody keep standing. So you have 1 is equal to ax minus 5a plus bx minus 2b, right? Are there any x's over here? Okay, so let's let's you can I'll make it even clearer for you. This is the same thing as ax plus by sorry b ax plus bx minus five a minus two b. So one is equal to a plus b times x minus five a minus two b. Are there any x's over here? So what do you know a plus b must be zero. zero. So therefore a is negative b. So that's your first thing you know. But then what do you know about this? What does that must equal? One. So how many equations do you have? One and two. You have two equations, and then what do you get? B is e A is equal to one. Th are they both a third? No. Yeah. Which one? A is a negative is a third? A is negative. And B is a third? Yes. So now once you have that, can you rewrite this kind of nicely? Yeah, you end up with what? You end up with the integral of one over negative three x minus two plus one over three times x minus 5 dx. Now, is that something you can integrate? Yeah, you absolutely can integrate that. Now, this process right here is totally awesome. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. There is a kind of a cheating method. Um, let me show you the cheating method. This statement right here, and I'm going to allow you to use this cheating method, and then you can tell me why it's a cheating method. That statement right there, Fiona, can you hit the light switch on the left? Needs to be true for all x values, correct? So let's pick some magic x values. What about x equals 5? What does that tell you? 1 is equal to b times 3. So b is x is equal to 2. What does that tell you? 1 is equal to a times negative 3. a is negative 3rd. You can pick magic values that get rid of the entire term. Here's why it's kind of cheating. Look at the original equation. Can you plug in 2 and 5? No, they're not in the domain. So I haven't, I'm, I'm being honest with you, I haven't reconciled this inconsistency, but this works every single time. I haven't reconciled this inconsistency. Yes, I will let you do it this way on the test, yes. They don't care. They're not going to care where you got the A and the B values from. No, they're going to look for, did you get them? Yes. See, here's the thing. If you don't use this magic method, sometimes it gets really annoying in the algebra, so I'm going to let you use this cheating method. If you want to tell me why this works every time, man. Theoretically, this statement is true. This should work for all x values. But what about the fact, what about the x values that aren't in the domain? Why are you allowed to use about x values that aren't in the domain? Don't worry about it too much. Is, is you can use it. Kind of, all yeah. Well, true. It, it's somewhere in there. I, I believe it is allowable. It's not, a, it's not a broken thing. Hold on. Think about it and then come back and talk to me about it. We have a lot more to cover. Fraction decomposition. I'm going to go verify this again, but as far as I remember, the, mo the highest power of PFDs that you see are single power. I see it's a power right there, single power. Can this be more entertaining if it's like a cubic on the bottom or like a repeated term like x plus 1 squared? Yeah, it gets more entertaining. As far as I remember, the BC exam just has single power 1. So this is about as difficult as you need to get. You can take a look at how much more entertaining it can be. Like I could make these really fun by giving you like a 
cortic, forcing you to use synthetic division to factor it right out the factor form. Because in the numerator, is it always constants? Just to give you a preview, if you want to look at this, if this was if this was like x squared plus two right here, the top term has to be dx plus c. So you have to find a non-constant. It's the same type of work, but it's a lot of algebra. As far as I remember, you do not need to go that deep. I will verify that, but unless you hear otherwise, this is as complicated as you need to get with PFDs, partial fraction decomposition. Okay, so let's look at this for a second. Don't don't do anything. Just everybody stare at this for a second. Let's let's meditate on this. By really careful, what I mean is there's a really cool substitution we can make. Anybody remember what the title of this section is called in your book? That's the big hint. There's trig identities here. So this is really close. There's a piece of this that's really close to, but really, what's the nicest trig identity you know? What's the nicest one? The first one. Cosine squared plus cosine squared. Sine squared plus cosine squared is one. So what does cosine squared equal? One minus sine squared. One minus sine squared. So let's just try something here. Just watch. Just go along for the ride here. Let's let x equal, just, just for randomness, let's use sine. Sine theta. So if that's true, let's use the substitution. We have 1 minus sine squared theta d. Oh, wait. Oh, what is dx equal to? OK, so be careful, right? Are you with me? Is everybody with me so far? You can't. We went from x to, th we did a u substitution. We went from x to theta. So we can't write dx here. I have to write what? I'm not done yet. I'll get there. This is d what? Cosine theta d theta. Right. So what does d? Th what does? Oh, it's already there. Dx. So now instead of dx, what do we write? Cosine theta, cosine theta, d, theta. d theta. You have to be very careful about that. And you're like, oh man, I just made it worse. But what's one minus sine squared? So that's the square root of cosine. I I'm no kidding. What's cosine squared? Oh, what's the square root of that? Oh, look at this. So we have, what do we have here? Oh, we have 1 over, one over cosine theta times cosine theta d theta is equal to the integral of what? 1 d theta, which is equal to theta plus c, right? But what, so if, hold on, I know, that's why we're going there, right? Are we in x, though? What are we in right now? We're in theta, correct? We're in theta. So if we wanted to go back to x, what would we need to do? So we know that theta is equal to sine inverse of what? Plug it down here. So what do we get? Sine inverse of plus c. Pretty. You can either t the thing that pisses us off right now is this four. So either we can get rid of the four right now, or we can substitute it something in right now to help us kind of see where to go. So what do we what do we want to be able to plug in for x given what we just did? We'd love to be able to plug in sine or cosine, right? We can do it either way, right? We could plug in sine, right? We could put in sine if we really, really, really wanted to. But if we did that, it just makes it a little hard to factor, like pull things out. So one thing you can do in this case, and this is kind of like the shortest method, you could theoretically pull out a two, right? And then make it x over two. You could instead say, let's let x equal 2 sine theta. If I do that, what happens? 1 over the square root of 4 minus 4 sine squared theta. And remember, dx is going to be 2 cosine theta d theta, right? So 2 cosine theta d theta, like this. It's kind of nice to do that because now you see the 4 in both places. And if you factor out the 4, it's kind of nice to plug it in and then factor as opposed to dealing with it. You know, it, you can do it either way. But what, what do you end up pulling out in front of this integral? 1 half, 1 over this. And you can pull this one out too, right? Oh, look at that. So that goes out there and you're left with cosine theta d theta. But we know this is just going to be the integral of, and that's sine squared, right? Cosine over cosine is what? 1, 1, d theta, mm -hmm. and theta. So now when we do this, we end up with what? Wait, hold on, don't, I don't want the final answer. I just want it to be theta plus what? C. C. Now you have to be really careful about this, though, because it's not written in terms of x anymore, right? So if we want to write it in terms of x, what do we have to do first here? Yeah, equals sine theta, right? 
So we know that theta is equal to the sine inverse of what? X over 2. So you plug that in and you end up with sine inverse of x over 2 plus c. So all we did there was add in one little thing, which was this is still a trig substitution. It's still using the same identity, but the setup, you add a little bit to this. You have to be really careful. You have to be super careful about this. How are we feeling about these? Substitution to make. If you make this substitution, what do you end up with? 1 over 9 tangent what tangent squared theta plus what nine oh what do we have to do for oh we need to do dx what's dx equal to three what's the derivative of tangent no the derivative of tangent not the derivative of inverse tan what's the derivative of tangent what's the derivative mr. Seaman is sad with tears long I'm trying to get some agreement okay Okay, so we think this is 3 times what? Secant squared theta what? D theta, right? Okay, so instead of dx, what do we write? 3 secant squared theta d theta, because now we're in theta land. Now, what's really nice about this? Well, can you factor out that 9? So you have 1 ninth of 1 over tangent squared theta plus 1 times, oh, and then the 3 comes out here, right? Secant squared theta d theta. What's tangent squared plus 1? It is what? Secant squared. So what do you end up with? 1 third of secant squared theta over secant squared theta d theta, which is 1 third of d theta. Are we pretty much home free at this point? Yeah. So again, there's a few things you need to remember. Your basic trig derivatives, basic trig derivatives, and we also need to remember things like this. Where does this come from, by the way? Anybody remember where that comes from? Same place we just started. C squared plus S squared is equal to 1, right? Divide everything by cosine squared. What happens when you do this? That turns into 1. This turns into what? Tangent. And this turns into? Secant. That's where it comes from, everybody. You need to remember those things. Okay, this is where it gets fun, because at this point, what's the challenge here? It kind of looks like one where you need to use sine, right? I'll give you 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Does it look like you have to use sine? Yeah, but what's the problem? What's the problem? It's a 2x. It's not a constant like 2, right? So what do you think you need to do with this one, Ali? What do you need to do with this one? No, you said, that, you said it earlier in this class, and I said we were going to get to it. Oh. Uh, yeah, this right here, 2x minus x squared equals something. We need to rewrite it. What is x minus 1 squared equal to? 2x plus 1, right? We're close to it, right? Hold on, hold on. It's not quite there, right? If I make this negative, it becomes negative, positive, and what? Negative, right? I made it negative, right? Okay, yay, fantastic. So what's this going to be? So to, so to turn this, to turn that into that, what do you need to do? So this is equal to 1 minus x minus 1 squared. Oh, look, now do we magically have something squared from 1? Do we magically have something squared from 1? Yeah. So you also need to remember completing the square. Remember all these things from like algebra land? Yeah. yeah.